Okay, it's done stalling, and then I have a check mark to launch an application. So when I, I'm going to just turn these check marks off, hit finish, and then there's my program, it's installed, and I'm going to run XLights. So just by double clicking. Now, the first thing it's going to ask you is something called, if you look at the top of this window, called Select Show Directory. Okay? So, the, this directory is where Xlights keeps all of your files, all of your animations you make, all the configuration settings for your different light displays. It's all stored in one folder on your hard drive. And that's called the Show Directory. So, it just keeps everything in one place, and that makes it really easy to find all of your Xlight stuff. It can back it up really easy because it's all in one folder. So, you can create any fold, this folder anywhere you want on your hard drive. So, by default, it's defaulting to the Documents folder on your hard drive, and that's perfectly fine. So, I'm going to make a new folder within Documents. And I'm just going to call it uh, uh, My Show, like that. And in general, it's a good idea to never use spaces in file names when you're dealing with Xlight. Sometimes uh, different, it, there can be different programs or supporting programs that don't like spaces. So whenever you're saving your animations or creating folder names or anything like that, uh, even within Xlight, if you have to give different objects names, it's best to stay away from spaces in general just to keep things running well. So I'm going to call this folder My Show um, with no space in the middle. And I did that by just, inside my documents folder, I just right clicked in an empty area over here and I had, and I had no new folder. So let me make a new folder right on the fly. And here's the folder it made. And then I'm just gonna double click to open it and then hit select folder. So, this, so the documents my show folder is gonna be where I'm gonna keep all of my Xlights data. And then it finishes loading. And then you're going to see this window pop up where it says, from time to time, Xlights has been known to crash, and sometimes we need more information. At the bottom, it's asking for an email address. So what that means is, um, if Xlights crashes, the developers would love to fix those problems, and, and so other people don't experience those crashes either. So if you, if you want to, this is totally optional, you can type in your email address down there, and uh, that will uh, help them uh, if they need to contact you about this for any reason. Suppose your computer, you're using Xlights, you're making animation, and Xlights crashes. Uh, the developers may want to reach out to you to, um, to say, hey, how did it crash? Can you give us some more information? We'd like to try to solve this problem. So if you want to be a part of uh, making Xlights a better product, uh, put your email address down in there and then hit OK. But again, you certainly don't have to. Okay, so. Here's the Xlights program. So it, it's, it's a pretty deep program. There's a lot of features in here. There are a lot of different things you can click on. Uh, kind of uh, hard to figure out for the first time people. So don't let it overwhelm you. Um, it's, it's not that hard once you start understanding how it thinks. And the major way that Xlights thinks are these three tabs in the left hand side of the screen. There's a controllers tab right there a layout tab, and a sequence, sequencer tab. So those are the three uh, major functions of Xlights. Controllers is where you define the hardware uh, that your lights are connected to. Okay, so a controller can be a lot of different things. So in the case of this uh, light LED panel right here, you know, the LED, panel, the LED lights themselves are not the controller. The controller actually tells which lights to turn off and on. So in the case of this panel, the controller is the Raspberry Pi uh, controlling those lights. So if you're running a, a, a large display with a lot of different lights, a lot of different hardware controllers, you would define them all on this screen so that Xlights knows how to find all of your lights and turn them off and on. The next tab over, layout, and we're going to cover these. Uh, the layout tab is, is it, uh, you can visually show where your lights are showing on, on your on your house, in your yard, even on this little display panel. So you can visually define where the lights appear physically in, in space, you know, on, uh, on that kind of stuff. The layout can either be 2D, you can actually upload a photograph. If you're doing Christmas lights of your house and then hang, literally hang virtual lights on your house so that X-Lights know where they're positioned. Uh, you can even design a, a three-dimensional version of your house and, and three-dimensionally place all your lights around it. So it's pretty sophisticated. 
For the purpose of this class, though, we're only going to define the, uh, this one panel virtually, so x so knows what it looks like. And the final tab is Sequencer, and that's where you make your actual animations to appear on your uh, display. So, first off, we're going to start with Controller. And what we're going to do is, you know, uh, typically what, what will happen is you would define the Raspberry Pi on this screen that's inside this box, and you can actually make your animations on x lights and hit play, and then it'll actually, x lights will send the animations directly to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi will show your animations live, you know, right from your laptop as you're designing them with x lights uh, We're going to go a different route with this. Uh, we're actually going to uh, create our animations on the laptop, and then we're going to save the animations as a file, and then upload those animations into the Falcon Player software on this panel. So that way, the animations are always on this panel, they're always accessible even when your laptop is not running. So that's, that's the tactic we're going to go with. So again, you could make this a live thing where you make animations on the laptop and hit play and they show live on here as you're designing them, but we're not going to do that with this particular uh, training session. So, we're going to create a, what's called a null controller, which means it's like a virtual controller. We're not going to tell x about this Raspberry Pi in particular. We're sort of, sort of just going to create a virtual controller that x uh, can use to control, uh, you know, to pretend like it's got a panel to work with. So to do that, what we do is we're going to hit this button on the left called Add Null. See that right there? So we're going to hit that, and then, we go over to where it says uh, name, okay? This, uh, we can call this pretty much anything we want. So we're gonna call this um, uh, LED panel. Okay, so that, that's, you know, nothing critical. Uh, description's not important, is not important. And then the number of channels down here is important. So from the previous class sessions, we remember that this panel has 64 lights across by 32 lights down. So that is quite a few lights. Um, I can't remember exactly how many. I think that was 2448, if I remember. So 64 times 32, 2048, uh, um, what are called pixels. So that's a lot of lights. But inside of each one of these lights is, an R, is a red light, a green light, and a blue light. So even though there's 2048 pixels, you know, on this grid, each one of those pixels has three individual LEDs inside. So, so there's really 6,144 actual lights in this panel, if you count all the red, greens, and blues. Every single one of those LED lights has to have a serial number so X lights can find it and, and uh, animate certain lights. So those X lights are called channels. Every single, every single light has to have a channel assigned to it. Uh, like a serial number, and then the X-Lights can find it. So we know for this particular panel, there are 6,144 uh, LED lights, and which equates to channels. So that's, that's our number right there that we put into this channels box right here. So instead of the default of 512, we're putting in 6144. So all we've really done is we've created a, a, a virtual controller. We're not really telling it about the Raspberry Pi here. We're just creating a virtual one. We gave it a name and we said how many lights that controller manages. So that's really all we have to do here. So the next thing is, is it, see how the save button here turned red on the far left? That means that I've made a change to the screen. I need to hit save for it to take effect. So if you hit save, nothing really happens except it's not red anymore. So that's, that's important to know too. All right. So uh, now that we've, we've worked on the controllers tab, we, we created our virtual controller. The next tab over is layout. So the layout tab is where, where your lights appear in, in the physical world, okay? So if you're doing Christmas lights, for instance, and you have a, a tree full of, of lights, you know, then you would actually draw a, a tree shape on this screen. Uh, if you had lights around your windows, um, you can actually upload a picture of your house into this screen and then draw lights around the window frames to indicate where those lights appear you know, on, in your display. So there's a lot of different types, they call these models. Every, every shape that you use for lights, whether it's a star or a tree or a wreath or a candy cane or 
just lines of lights along your fence, those are all called models. So we have to define how this panel looks to X lights. So we know by looking at it, it's square or rectangular and it's got 32 lights up and 64 lights across. X lights doesn't know that yet, so we have to teach it. So we're going to define a model uh, to teach that. So if you look along the top of the black box, you're going to see all these different shapes here. And uh, there's the first one is arches, candy canes, all that kind of stuff. And we're not going to get into all these. Um, you know, this is more for uh, people that are doing more fancy things with it. But we are interested in this one in the middle called, it looks like a, a gray grid. It, and it says create new matrix. So that's what this shape is to us. It's a matrix on this uh, LED panel. So we're going to click on that. And then nothing seems to happen, but if I take my mouse and move it away, that gray, it's hard to tell even then, but that, that gray box of button has been selected. So if I take my mouse, just the way it is, after I've already clicked on that once, I can hold down the mouse button and keep it held down and actually drag this yellow series of dots and I'm just holding down the mouse button. When I'm done, I let go. All right. Now the important thing to do is once we've drawn our matrix, uh, x lights is in uh, stamping mode. It will actually draw more matrices if I keep dragging down here. So I have to make sure I go back up to this button and turn it back off. So I'm not dragging, drawing any more matrices. All right. So here, here is our matrix that we drew. And if you look over on the far left, that's the model that we, that we drew right here. And if I click on it, it turns yellow. Okay, and I can do things with it. I can move it around. I can grab a handle and stretch it to match, you know, closer to what my panel looks like. The size of it doesn't matter. Um, it, it, it's, it's a virtual panel, so it, it's, it'll work to find whether it's a, a tiny panel or if it's, you know, slightly out of proportion, it, it won't really matter at all. So I'm just going to draw a fairly large uh, panel like that. Now, the next thing we need to do is how many, we have to tell x lights how many lights are in this model, how many pixels. All right, in this case, a pixel is, uh, contains a red and green and blue light, right? And then, uh, so if we have uh, 64 by 32 pixels, we have 6,144 uh, LEDs, which are the channels. So if I go over to this part right here, this is the matrix that I just drew on the screen. I can click on it. And if you look below, down, down here, right above the red save button, you're going to see some uh, properties of that model. I can actually take that border right here and pull it up so I can see more of those properties uh, easier. So this is how this uh, model is defined to x lights. So we're going to put in some specific uh, numbers here to make sure we define this properly. And again, if you do not see these properties over here, make sure that your model here is clicked on to turn it yellow and then you'll see all this stuff over here. So what do we do here? There's a lot of different options here that we don't really have to worry about right now, but we'll, we'll do the basics. So we can give the model a name. Right now it's just called Matrix. Uh, I'm going to call it just something like a Colossus Micro. Not, and you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then this part here that says number of strings. Normally with X lights, you're dealing with uh, Christmas lights. You know, you're dealing with strings of lights on a wire. So a string of lights would be a string of lights. So, so in a matrix kind of thing, we're, we're sort of adapting that terminology to fit something that is not on a string, okay? So in this case, the strings is the number of, if you imagine every row of the LED panel, is one string of lights. That's how we're going to find this to X lights. So, so we have 32 rows going up and down. So we're going to put 32 strings right here. Okay. And then nodes per string, right below it, we have 32 rows. And how many columns do we have? 64. So we have 64 lights per row. So I'm going to put 64 down on their nodes per string, like that. Okay. So now X lights knows exactly how many lights we're dealing with here. And if you notice at the top, right above the properties, you're going to see if I stretch out these column headings a little bit, you have start channel is 1. So basically, x lights knows that the very first LED of this panel starts at serial number 1. And then it goes all the way to 6,144 
uh, LEDs. So it, it now knows exactly how many lights are in this panel. So that's good. Okay, the other thing we need to worry about in this place is the starting location field right here. Okay, and this affects how, uh, how the uh, animations will appear um, properly. So suppose you make an animation that's like text and you want your name to appear on this. If you have the wrong starting location defined, your name could be upside down by accident or it could be reversed, inverted by accident. So the starting location is important to get that set right. And we're just, we're, we're going to hope this works, but try setting it to bottom right. So if we make an animation and it doesn't show up right, we can come back into this spot under the Layout tab and change that to another option and it might get it to correct itself. So we're going to try bottom right for the first time and see how that goes. All right, so again, uh, we, made, we created a model just by clicking once on this button in, in the uh, toolbar at the top. We dragged the si a rough approximate uh, dimension to how it's going to look. And then we clicked it to turn it yellow so we can make changes to it and all these properties appeared on the left. And then we defined these properties. And after, when we made these changes, there's your red save button in, in the lower right corner of the screen. That's prompting you to save your changes. And if you don't click that red button, and if you move on to a different tab up here and you don't click on save, uh, those changes could be lost. So whenever you see a red button, always click it to make sure you're, and then it's no longer red. Okay, so again, we went to the controllers tab to create our virtual controller. Okay, we just called it LED panel and it's going to drive 6, 000, over 6,000 lights. We clicked on the layout tab to, to physically define what, what that panel looks like and how many lights it's in. So we gave it a name. And up here, we said it has 32 rows of lights and 64 columns of lights. And the, the bottom right is where the first light roughly starts. Okay, and with this case, we're going to say bottom right, which is down here. And then, so now we're ready for the fun stuff. The sequencer tab, right over here. Okay, that's the, this is the third major area inside X-Lights. 